We're in a series of, um, I believe, great messages through the summer on the Holy Spirit. How many of you have been blessed over the last few weeks on this summer series on the Holy Spirit? We've looked at who the Holy Spirit is, where the Holy Spirit is, what the presence, last Sunday's message, what the presence of the Holy Spirit is in our hearts and lives. Today I want to talk about the purpose. There's a purpose to the Holy Spirit. And the primary purpose, of course, um, is to lead us to Jesus, all right? We discovered that the Holy Spirit is the one that's moving in the hearts and lives of people to bring them to Jesus, and there's no greater purpose, obviously, than that. But that's not the only purpose, the only purpose of the Holy Spirit. There's some other purposes, and that is specifically to transform each and every one of us in our thoughts, words, and deeds, in our character, our conduct, convictions, and confessions into the image and likeness of Jesus. So if you've got your uh, message insert, write this down. The Holy Spirit's purpose actually is twofold. I'm going to give you the two points of the message right out of the gate, and then we're going to kind of back it uh, back, back, I guess, and uh, go into depth with each of these purposes. Purpose number one um, is to make us like Jesus, okay? So the Holy Spirit desires for us to be like Jesus in character. That's his first purpose. And the second purpose is uh, for us to do like Jesus. That's our conduct. So the Holy Spirit's purpose is twofold, to make us like Jesus in character and in conduct. After the Holy Spirit brings us to Jesus, he begins what I like to say, the transforming process uh, of making us like Jesus in character and making us like Jesus in conduct. In other words, I guess I could say it this way, the goal of God is for us to be like Jesus. I mean, that's really what the Holy Spirit's up to. If you want to know what the Holy Spirit is up to, I'm talking about after salvation now, all right? After you come into the kingdom of God, after you become a child of God, um, it's, it's, it's not over. Isn't that interesting? That, you know, if, if that's all, think about it this way, I guess, um, if all God wanted you and I to do is get saved, um, then the second after we would have received Jesus, he could have went, Poof, and taken us to heaven. If that was the touchdown, right? If that's the goal. Now, that's, that's part of the process, but that's not it. There's more to, uh, there's more to God, there's more to the Holy Spirit, there's more to the Christian life than just being born again. Now that's the most important thing. I don't want to underestimate that. Unless you're born again, all this other stuff really doesn't matter. But the Holy Spirit isn't finished with us. Uh, he's up to something in our hearts and lives. Or, or God could have just taken us very easily to heaven after we got saved, right? I would have only been alive six years. And I would have went, whoop, <laughs> gone. And I think about all the stuff I would have missed, right, uh, if, if salvation was it. So the Holy Spirit is up to... Uh, up to something. Now here's, a, here's a, a, great, a great comfort I think to probably all of us is in the midst of that, in the midst of, of the Holy Spirit changing us and transforming us into the image and likeness of Jesus, um, God accepts us where we are, but He doesn't leave us there. God accepts us for who we are at the point of our conversion, at the point of our salvation, but He doesn't leave us the same. And here's the problem with today's church. Can I just talk globally here? And for so many Christians, um, I, I think they've got this, this, this wrong in their theology and they're wrong in their thinking is, well, God, God loves me. God saved me. I believe in Jesus. And that's it. Uh, my life just will go on for the next, say, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years the same way it did the 20, 30, 40, or 50 before it. No, 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 sir. No, ma'am. Your life should change. At the point of your conversion, life should begin, not necessarily overnight, but begin to be different for you. Um, and it's certainly God's goal, all right? Jesus does accept us where we are. Jesus accepts us for who we are. Where were we? Well, some of us, when God found you, you were in a pretty bad spot. You were in a pretty bad place. You were probably doing some pretty bad deeds. Uh, maybe, you know, we can put some titles to those things, but the main title is you were a sinner. You and I were sinners when God found us, right? But He saved us, and then He what? He began to change us and transform us. So, um, so many people have got this confused, I think, today is, well, you know, uh, I was an alcoholic when God found me, and God saved me, and God accepts me just the way I am, so I can continue to be an alcoholic the rest of my life. 
Does that make sense? You know, that's just an example. I was a drug addict when Jesus found me. Well, I guess I'm going to always be a drug addict. No. You don't have to be. It's not God's desire. He accepts you where you are. But he what? He begins to change us and transform us and set us free from the life of the, of the pig pen, of the mess, right, that you and I were in. That's the, that's the hope of our salvation, right? That life no longer has to be the same. Maybe you were a depressed mess when God found you. Well, that doesn't mean you live depressed the rest of your life. You've got the joyful one living inside you now, the Holy Spirit. So God finds us where, 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 where we are. He accepts us where we are and for who we are, but He doesn't want us to remain the same. Amen? So in other words, God's got some changes that He wants to do in all of our lives, in all of our lives. Because God finds us in different spaces, in different places, uh, uh, every day, every day. But God wants to, uh, to begin that transforming process. First of all, obviously in our hearts, in our spirit, then in our soul, in our thinking, and then, and then in our bodies, and then in our very lives. And um, now I've been privileged, like many of you, to know men and women of God who have walked this transforming life with the Holy Spirit over many, many decades, okay? And upon, you know, their sunset years, well, I tell you what, these people, they think like Jesus, they talk like Jesus, they walk like Jesus. I can mention some people in my life where you walk into the room that they're in and you feel the presence of the Lord because, because of that transforming process over, over a lifetime. Well, that should be you, that should be me, right? As we, as we go through this life walking, as we just sang in the garden, with the Lord, He walks with me and He talks with me along life's narrow way. Well, that's, that's this life. And we should be more and more like Jesus. Um, and again, this isn't, uh, this isn't going to happen over, over uh, uh, you know, a morning devotion. And I think it's so easy for us to get hard on ourselves and kind of condemn ourselves and be like, man, this, you know, I'm still thinking, I'm still talking, I'm still doing all this stuff I used to do, and I'll be, yet I've got Jesus or something in my heart. Don't condemn yourself. Don't, don't, don't put yourself down. It's a, we're all works in progress is what I'm trying to say. Every art, every, and I'm not an artist, but I'm told, every piece of art, you know, you just, and then 60 seconds later, paint a masterpiece. No, it takes what? It takes days, weeks, months, sometimes years to paint a masterpiece. Well, that's the Holy Spirit in us, is He finds us where we're at, but then He begins to uh, transform us into the image and likeness of Jesus. I like what Pastor Max Cato, uh, Lucato had to say about this. Many of you maybe heard of Pastor Max, uh, pastors of church in, in Texas, uh, I believe Austin, and has written many, many uh, wonderful books Christian literature, New York Times bestseller. I love it. This, I think, is the greatest sentence, maybe two, that he's ever penned. He says, God loves you just the way you are. Some of us need to hear that, right? God loves you today just the way you are. But he refuses to leave you that way. <laughs> hey, man. He refuses. He will not. He loves you, but he refuses to leave you that way. God wants you to be like Jesus. That's the goal. That's the target of the Holy Spirit to make us like Jesus. Romans 8, 29, the Apostle Paul said, for those God foreknew, He predestined to be conformed, what? Into the likeness of His Son. So the Holy Spirit is what? He's wanting to conform us into the image and likeness of Jesus to where when people see you, they see Jesus. When people feel you, they feel Jesus. When people hear you speak, it's, it's almost like hearing the words of Jesus. Now, they're your words, they're, they're your voice, but it's like, man, that, that had a little zip to it, right? That, 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 that kind of touched me in my core. Well, what is that? That's the Holy Spirit through us, right? And, and, and that's the goal, that's the goal. Uh, Galatians 4.19, look at this scripture. It says, my dear children, again, the Apostle Paul writing to the church, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth, right? Until what? Christ is formed in you. So the purpose of the Holy Spirit is for us to be conformed, transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus in character and in conduct. Now, some of you, like me, grew up playing with Play-Doh. This recognize, you recognize this? I love this thing. I love it. 
I've got some Play-Doh, right? Just some, just a mass, you can kind of see it down in there, just a mass of Play-Doh. But here's the Holy Spirit. We're, you and I are in here, and, and he's, what, he's wanting to, I hope this illustration works, there we go, is what, is conform, here we go, here we come, right? Into what? Into the image and likeness of what? Of Jesus. So here's, here's Jesus, right? And the Holy Spirit is what? Is, is trying to conform us, trying to form us, fashion us into the image and likeness of Jesus. That's the goal of God, is for us to be conformed into what? His likeness. His likeness in every single way. Ephesians 4, the Apostle Paul said, We're, we are not meant to remain as children. There it is. We're not just, to, or another way of saying this, we're not meant to be, remain, I love that, remain, babes in Christ. You know, when you and I get saved, we get born again, we're babies, spiritual babies. We're babes in Christ. Well, God's got a goal for every spiritual baby to grow up and become a, one day a spiritual toddler, right? And then a teenager, and then a young adult, and then an adult. And then, you know what? If God allows you to live a full life, then you'll be what? A godly senior Christian adult, right? Well, you know what? We don't put demands, and hopefully you as parents don't ever do this, or grandparents. I don't put the expectations of a toddler that I have for teenagers. And I don't certainly expect a teenager to act like a senior adult, right? It's a process we grow up physically, right? In other words, I'm not expecting my six-year-old to drive as a 16-year-old. 16-year-old, you know, uh, people drive cars, not six-year-old people, right? It's, it's different levels of this thing. Well, that's the goal. God doesn't want us to remain in our, if I can I say it this way, spiritual pampers. <laughs> and it's so frustrating, right? I think for the Holy Spirit, you know, you've been saved for 30 years, and you're still sucking on your passy. You're still, you're still in your diapers. It's time to grow up, Jerry, right? It's time to grow up, Jenny, right? Into the image and likeness of God. If you and I are where we're at, even one year from now, we're failing the process. Matter of fact, you know what? We know this physically, do we not, parents? Come on now. If your child is, uh, I don't know, 22 years old, and he's only the size of a toddler, I'm talking physically, we take them to doctors. We said, something's wrong. Something's not developing. Something's not growing. Well, we should do that as Christians, right? We should say, hey, man, if you're, if you're still the same way 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, the day you got saved, man, there's some, there's some development that's lacking. Now, does, are you going to heaven? Yes. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Does he love you? Yes. We just haven't what, given ourselves to the purpose of the Holy Spirit, the transformation process. How do we know that, Pastor Tim? Well, because of this last line. We're not to meant... We are not meant to remain as children, but to grow up in every way. Into what image? Into the image of Christ. All right? Now, you've been wanting to say this to the person sitting next to you all morning, so let's just say those two words. Grow up. Right? Come on. Go ahead. You've been, you know you've been wanting to say it. <laughs> grow up. Right? Have you ever been told that by somebody? Parents, have you ever said that to your kids? Grow up. It's time to grow up. Right? Well, Christians, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow, amen, into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. Here's the, here's the thing. The Holy Spirit's purpose, again, is to change us, to transform us in spirit, soul, and body into what? The very image and likeness of Jesus Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit is up to, right? To conform us like that Play-Doh, right? And we're, so we're the, you know, there's different images. He's the potter. We're the clay. He's the potter. We're the clay. The clay doesn't tell the potter what it's going to be. The potter tells the clay. And the potter is God. We're the clay. What's the potter up to? What is the potter forming us and fashioning us and making us into? The image and likeness of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's what we're, that's what we're to become, and that's what God is up to in every single one of our lives. Uh, we could say it this way. We're to uh, be the exact representation of Jesus Christ in the earth. Now, that's some pretty high standards, right? 
But that's what God's called us. We'll see this to be, all right? It starts in our hearts. We're to be like Jesus in our character, and then we're to do like Jesus in our conduct. We're to, if we could say this, represent Christ in the earth. In fact, that's what one of the images of the church is. We're the body of Christ. See, Jesus is in heaven. Well, who is the Lord's hands? Who is the Lord's feet? Who's the Lord's lips? Who's the Lord's voice? Who's the Lord's heart and compassion in the earth today? The church. Are you seeing this thing? We are the hands and feet and mouth and lips and heart of Jesus, legs of Jesus, right? When you go uh, to your neighbors and, and you, you witness to them, that's like Jesus is going through you, right? Through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Every Christian is to represent, represent Christ in the earth. We are to be the exact representation of Jesus Christ. Another way to say it is this, the Holy Spirit is a construction worker. Now we know something about construction, do we not, Illinoisans? <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, you can't kind of drive around this town without some kind of construction going on. I'm talking about on the streets. Try going to Peoria. Just try it. <laughs> Just try. There's some construction going on, right? Well, the Holy Spirit is a construction worker. He's got his hard hat on and his gloves and his jackhammer, and guess what? He is messing us up. Some of you know this. You're like, he's messing me up. He's, 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 he's tearing me up, right? Well, that's what every good construction worker has to do. Think about this. Before the construction workers can construct, many times they have to deconstruct. Like our roads out here, right? Isn't it interesting? Right, right up the road, if you, if you go, if you're planning on going, we invite you all to the water baptism cookout and celebration after church at our house. But from here to our house, just right up Parkside, there are some spots of construction that they have what? They've tore up the road. They've deconstructed. I mean, they, you know, and they've removed it. Well, sometimes that's what the Holy Spirit has to do. The Holy Spirit has to what? Deconstruct. The Holy Spirit has to take some stuff out of us, remove that bad attitude, remove those bad intentions. Remove, are you with me? Those addictions. And then he puts in the good. He puts in the new concrete. If we could use that as an illustration. So the Holy Spirit's a construction worker. He deconstructs, he destroys, he demolishes anything in our lives that's not of him. Right? Again, he accepts us as we are. He, accep he, he accepts us where he finds us, but he doesn't leave us there. He says, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some deconstruction here. We're going to move some things. We're going we're gonna to throw some things out. And then I'm going to what? Then I'm going to construct. I'm going to bring some things into your heart, into your life, where it's only the good that remains. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit, I found this, will remove everything and everyone in, around, and about us, which is not of God for the sole purpose of reconstructing us into Christ-likeness. Well, I tell you what, can I just, I won't pick on you, but I'll pick on me. Uh, there's been some times in my life, especially when I was a young Christian, that I had some friends that weren't the best of friends. Let's just put it that way. There were some bad influences, right? Again, God loves these people. God loves them. I pray for them. I, I don't know where they're at today. But they were in my circle of friends, right? And I got saved. I got, you know, uh, on track with the Lord, and all of a sudden, one by one, I mean, people started kind of leaving my life. I mean, just God removing them, God, you know, just poof, 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 poof. Uh, and and it's tough. It it hurts when you have, you know, you're used to going out with these people on the weekend. All of a sudden, they don't call you no more. They don't they don't text you anymore, right? And it's like, what is up with this? Well, it's God. I didn't know it was God at the time, but it was God removing the wrong friends. Now, here's the great thing. Specifically in college, I had some not-so-good influences. God removed them one week, two weeks. There was a period of transition and loneliness. I thought, well, it's just me and God, <laughs> right? And then the next thing you know, all of a sudden, God started bringing what? Christian friends into my life that were good influences that then started calling me and saying, hey, what are you doing this weekend? started texting me, hey, let's go out, right? 
and they were so God again will remove the wrong and then bring in the right into our lives all why to help us conform to the image and likeness of Jesus now what are the two instruments that the Holy Spirit will use to construct us into the image and likeness of Jesus here it is he will use God's Word all right the number one source of construction is the Word of God all right and number two life's experiences life circumstances so sometimes one of the reasons we go through difficult seasons and difficult days is what is the is the construction is the construction point right um, and it and it's sometimes painful you know we can't talk to the Plato here but if it could say something it probably be saying ouch right <laughs> sometimes it's like that in life it was like God this is killing me and God's like good <laughs> I want to get that out um, some of you know some things about vineyards or plants and again I'm not a gardener this is not a green thumb but I know enough about gardening to know this that a gardener a good gardener will prune the branches of the dead stuff right? the gardener will it back. And sometimes, you know, you feel life, you feel like, ooh, God's pruning me. God's, you know, this, this, this. But you know what I found out? The gardener knows that the, that the fruit tree doesn't know. If we don't go through the pruning season, we don't have the abundance of harvest. We don't have the, the, the new growth, right? And so God will what? God will, God will use his word. He'll use life circumstances, the good, the bad, and the God can use it all. For what? For the to, to produce the image and likeness of Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. In other words, we're all kids under construction. I love that. The Holy Spirit is a construction worker and every child of God is a kid under construction. So, uh, be patient with me. God's not finished with me yet. I'll be patient with you because God's not finished with you yet. We're all works in process. We're all kids under construction. The Lord's not finished with us yet. We're in the process of becoming more like Jesus. Our entire lives. Our entire lives. That's what this life is all about, is, 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 is being conformed and transformed into the image and likeness of God. And again, we aren't what God wants us to be, but thank God we are what we used to be. The Lord isn't finished making us and molding us and shaping us into the image and likeness of Jesus. And let's just face it, if he did it overnight, it'd probably kill us all. I mean, it would just be an overhaul, it, you know, like an engine overhaul. It would be an overhaul that would probably be too much for us. So God will do a little here, a little there. Sometimes he'll work in this area of our lives. Sometimes he'll work in that area of our lives. But here's the thing I'm learning. I'm learning this, is, is to is to stay on the wheel. <laughs> Let the potter continue to moment. Stay on the wheel. The temptation is to jump off the wheel and to say, God, stop. <laughs> right? It's too painful. It's too hard. But, but if we'll just stay in his hands, if we'll just stay as a construction worker, he's got good things. He's working, he's working it out. And it's hard. It's hard to know. But here's the thing. Boy, I wish I knew this 20 years ago. It, it it's a little bit easier to know what God's up to and to take it on those difficult days if you know he's got he's got good things in store for us not bad it might feel like he's killing you but he's not he's making us he's forming us he's fashioning us into his image and likeness now i want to share uh two two ways today that the holy spirit transforms us into the image and likeness of jesus there's two ways the first transformation process is the fruit of the spirit and this is the inward work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. The Holy Spirit transforms us to be like Jesus and notice our character through developing the fruit of the Holy Spirit within us. These are the qualities, these are the characteristics that every Christian, and I mean this, every one of us, not just here today at the tab, watching online, but around the world, should exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. It's the same for all of us. The fruit of the Spirit. What are, what are the fruit uh, of the Holy Spirit? 
the fruit of God's presence in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, Galatians 5, 22 through 24 tells us, says this, the fruit of the Spirit, here it is, there's nine fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, stop right there, patience, right? Developing patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And one of the ways he develops us, these, these, these fruit within us to come out of us, and, and I'm glad you're sitting down for this, is to put us in opposite opportunities and positions for these things to come forth. So in other words, how does God develop patience in us and out of us? By putting us in traffic jams. <laughs> are, are you with me? Where you're going to, I don't have time for this, right? I'm late. Patience. He's developing patience, right? Uh, kindness, right? How does he develop kindness? By putting us in opportunities where it's easier to be unkind. I mean, just kind of take a step back and just survey what you're going through and say, okay, this is what God's up to right now, right? Yeah. Goodness, faithfulness, self-control, right? By putting us in positions where it's what? Easier to lose control, right? This is how God works. This is how God, and he's working this again in us and out of us. This is the fruit of the Spirit. He says, against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the sinful nature and his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit, right? So we don't go to the opposite of these fruit. We keep in step with what God is doing in us so that it can come out of us. All right, transformation process number two. So the Holy Spirit develops the fruit of the Spirit within us to make us be like Jesus in our character right that's number one transformation number two are the gifts of the Spirit and this is outward right this is an outward work of the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit's working in us in our hearts and lives right but he's also work wanting to work through us and out of us right in uh, in our hearts and lives in other words the Holy Spirit empowers us to do the works of Christ in our conduct through developing the gifts of the Spirit through us, through us. In other words, we aren't only to be like Jesus, we're to do like Jesus. We're to do exactly like what He did. Uh, we're to be like Jesus, absolutely. That's priority number one, that's transformation process number one. But it doesn't stop there, right? In other words, it's not just God's goal for us to be loving and kind and patient and gentle and self-controlled, and that stops. No, God is up to a second thing in us and through us, and that's what? That's for us to do the works of Jesus and to do, do them the way he did it with great power and effectiveness. This is through the, what the Bible calls the gifts of the Holy Spirit, all right? Now, there's numerous passages on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I just want to give us one. And this one comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Look at this passage with me uh, on, on the screen. It says this, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. That's very important right there. Did you catch that sentence? There's different kinds of gifts, but it's the same Holy Spirit that works them through the hearts and lives of people. Now he's going to go into to talking about what those are. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. In other words, every Christian has the Holy Spirit. But to one, there's given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues or languages and to still another, the interpretation of tongues or languages. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit. And watch this now. And He gives them to each one just as He determines. So the Holy Spirit's in us, and He gives us the gifts, certain gifts, we could say abilities, maybe talents would be another way of saying it, 
that he wants us uh, to use in our lives to help others, to be a blessing to others, right? And we don't all have the same gifts. Now, we all have the same spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit, but we have different gifts. We have different, how can I say this, roles and places in the body of Christ to fulfill the exact purpose that Christ wants to fulfill through us. Let me give you an example. Let's just look at our bodies, all right? So the purpose and function of my nose is very different than the purpose and function of my ear. The purpose and function of my hand is very different than the purpose and function of my foot. All different. My arms, my legs, all different. But together they form what? One body that is complete. Well, that's how it is in the church. We all have different gifts, but we all form one body, the body of Christ. Now, my nose isn't jealous of my ear. My eye isn't threatened by my mouth. My foot doesn't look to my hand and say, oh, I wish I was a hand, and be jealous. So we need not be jealous of one another's gifts. If God wants you to be a nose, be a nose. If God wants you to be a hand, be a hand. God's called me, and my wife will probably admit, I'm a mouth. I'm up here preaching, right? I mean, God, and I talked to the Lord about that when he said, I'm calling you to be a preacher. I said, oh, I don't know about this. But it's what he called me to do, right? And it doesn't make someone that, you know, is serving in, you know, the, uh, the youth ministry or children's ministry any less important. Some of up here to lead worship, to play the drums, to play the keyboard, right? All gifts. And we look up there, and, and, and you know what? We, we, we need to thank God for the gifts of the Spirit within the hearts and lives of people. We have people with technological gifts. We have people with artistic gifts. I mean, some of you can paint and color and draw, and it just comes easy for you. Does that make sense? I mean, you have that gift, you have that talent. That's a clue, it's saying, hello, hello, hello. That's what God wants you to do for Him, right? So find out what you're good at and do that. Don't try to be someone else and try to do something else that God has called someone else to do, right? Because here's what happens. We'll be frustrated. And the people around you will be frustrated because you're not very good at it. Now, do you love the Lord and He loves you? Absolutely. Are you going to heaven? Absolutely. So in other words, most of you know this about me. I've admitted it publicly over 30 years of preaching. Um, I, I'm not an artist. I mean, I'm not. I can't, I can't draw stick people. I, I, I mean, it just, it comes out looking like Forky. You know, are you with me? I mean, I'm not an artist. So guess what I try not to do? Guess what I don't do? I don't do art. I celebrate those that do. I go, wow, that's really good. That's a beautiful painting. That's a beautiful picture. Right? Yeah, it is. He's smiling at you, right? I, I do. I stay. In other words, stay in your lane. Stay, in, stay with what God's given you to do and say, this is my contribution to the church. This is my contribution to the world, right? Whatever that is, that's what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are about. And God will use us all, what, together to make up, what, the body of Christ. Look at what Jesus said. This is, this is you know, there's just some things in the Bible you read and go, that's just too good to be true. Can that really be true? And this is one of those passages. Look at it with me, John 14. Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he's talking to them about what I'm talking about with you this morning. And he says this, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. Anybody who's a Christian, that's faith in him, will do what Jesus has been doing. In fact, and, okay, so what was Jesus doing? Well, he was teaching, preaching, healing, counseling, delivering people. He was loving people. He was feeding people. Uh, he was saving people. I mean, if you have faith in me, Jesus says, you'll do what I've been doing. Now, here's the statement. If I was there with Jesus, I think my eyes would have been, 
my head would have tilted on this one. He will do even greater works than these. Because I'm going to my Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. Now here's a statement. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I'll do it. Jesus says, listen, the Holy Spirit that's working in me all these miracles, doing all these good works, you're going to do. In fact, you're going to do greater works. Now, not necessarily greater in quality, but greater in quantity. See, Jesus, while he was on the earth, was one man, one body. If he was in Nazareth, all the miracles happened in Nazareth. If he went to Capernaum, all the miracles happened in Capernaum, all the le- he was on the seashore of the Galilee teaching and preaching. That's where. But now Jesus is in heaven and the Holy Spirit is given to the church. Now guess how many bodies make up the church of Jesus Christ in the 21st century? Sociologists tell us worldwide somewhere around 2.5 billion bodies. 2.5 billion people claim to be Christians who have faith in Jesus. Think of just Think of if if 2.5 billion Christians started doing the works of Jesus, how the world would be transformed. I mean in a decade. Are you seeing this thing? Not greater in quality. You can't improve on what Jesus did is what I'm saying. I mean, he's God. Jesus was God in the flesh. No one's going to do it better than God. So he wasn't talking about greater works in terms of quality. He's talking about greater works in terms of quantity. Let's just say I don't know how many people Jesus healed because not everybody uh, that Jesus healed is recorded in the Bible. But let's say Jesus healed 10,000 people. It's a good number, 10,000 people. Well, how many people do you think the Holy Spirit could heal through 2.5 billion? If everybody just healed one person, that's 2.5 billion miracles. That's more in quantity than Jesus did. That's what he's talking about here. And the key to it is just ask God, just ask me to do it through you, right? God's given us these gifts. Lord, use my gifts. To, to further your kingdom. Whatever those are. If you're a counselor, don't try to be a preacher. I've seen so many people, some of you have been to these churches, bless their hearts. You know, you got these, you know, pastors away, I guess, on vacation, or whatever, they pull, the, pull in, you know, the, the counseling pastor to preach. And it's nails on the chalkboard. And you're thinking, my God, when's he going to finish? And he's only been up there five minutes. You don't, if God's called you to be a Christian counselor, don't be a Christian preacher. Right? That's why I don't counsel people. I'm not very good. I'll meet with you once and twice, and then I'm, if you need further counseling, that, there's nothing wrong with counseling, by the way. Absolutely nothing wrong with counseling. I refer people out. You know that. I mean, I'll be like, yeah, you probably ought to go jump off the cliff. <laughs> it's bad. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> I'll meet with you. I'll pray with you. And if you need for, I'm not, I know my lane. And I'm not jealous of the Christian counselor, am I? I'm like, hey, here's some numbers. Of people in our community, Bloomington Normal, that are great Christian counselors, go see them. They'll help you through that, and they're great. It, they're they're ears, right? They're ears. I'm a mouth. <laughs> and I'm not jealous of them, and I hope they're not jealous of me. We applaud one another because it takes us all. It takes us all to be the body of Christ in the earth today. Acts 10:38. Look at this with me as I close. God anointed. Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and he went around doing good and healing all who are under the power of the devil because God was with him so how did Jesus do the great works that Jesus did here it is through the anointing the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit before Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit he did no miracles He did no mighty works. It's only after the Holy Spirit came upon him, we talked about this in the last couple weeks, that God what? God anointed Jesus, or we could say this, God blessed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power, and after that, God used what? The gifts of the Holy Spirit to do what? I love this, to do good. See, God's given you a gift, and he's given you the Holy Spirit to anoint that gift to do good to others and for others in other words to be a blessing I like to think of it this way God has blessed me to be a blessing God has blessed you to be a blessing with certain gifts talents and abilities 
Uh, Kevin, can I pick on you just for a second? He's a woodworker. He likes to work with wood. I can hammer a nail in some wood. That's what I can do. I'm not a woodworker. But he can make desks. He can make cabinets. He can make tables. And I mean, God's given him that gift. And God's anointed him with the Holy Spirit to be a blessing to other people with those gifts. See, and there's no jealousy between us. We all, he's got it. <laughs> right? I mean, it's wonderful. And, and, and that's how it works. What? To go out and do good and to be a blessing to the people in your life. To the people in your life. So in conclusion, what's the Holy Spirit purpose in our life? Twofold. Twofold. Here it is up on the screen one last time. Number one. Purpose number one. The Holy Spirit desires for us to be like Jesus in our character. Purpose number two, the Holy Spirit desires for us to do like Jesus in our conduct. That's what the Holy Spirit's up to in each and every one of our lives. For us to be like Jesus, do like Jesus. Be like Jesus, do like Jesus. Be like Jesus, do like Jesus until He calls you home. That's really it. Just keep doing it. Keep becoming. And ultimately, I believe, you know when, when it's finished, the ultimate work is finished, and we get off the potter's wheel, is at the resurrection. Because God's working in us, our spirit, our soul, and then there's this flesh, right? That ultimately is going to be transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus. Talking about His resurrection body. It, it isn't finished until the resurrection. So we're all what? We're all kids in process. We're all kids under construction. Be patient with me. God's not finished with me yet. And I'll be patient with you. God's not finished with you yet. And together, together we're going to grow. Together we're going to go and make a big difference for the kingdom of God in the earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for just giving us enlightenment, wisdom, uh, revelation, knowledge on what you're up to in each and every one of our hearts and lives. And we thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, we just invite you right now to come and to help us be more like Jesus and the thoughts that we think, the words that we speak, and help us to do like Jesus in the very uh, actions that we exhibit in our lives. Uh, Holy Spirit, we want to make room for you right now in this place. We want to give you permission to, to draw us closer to you. If there's a situation in your life here this morning that that you need prayer for, we want to invite you to come forward here momentarily. Uh, God will meet you at the point of that need. If you need just uh, some encouragement, if you need peace, counsel, if you need healing, if you need deliverance, whatever the need is, there's, there's hope found in Jesus. We want to invite you to come in this place, in this time, this morning. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the lead pastor at The Tab. And I'm Mindy Farrell. The Tab is now located at 1845 West Hovey Avenue in Normal, Illinois. Here's some things you can expect to experience at The Tab.